This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. is um, uh, Dr. Esther John, and she is um, in the Cancer Prevention Institute of California, a senior research scientist in Cancer Prevention Institute. Um, she's also a consulting professor at the Division of Epidemiology, Department of Health Research Policy, Stanford University School of, of Medicine, and a co-leader in the program of Cancer Epidemiology Population Studies at the Stanford Cancer Institute. I will give you all the time. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me. So my talk is going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to be uh, presenting any results, but I will be introducing you to a new study in girls that we started last year. Um, and I hope that we can come back, uh, not just me, but the entire investigator team in future years and actually present results of what we're finding. We are going to be, uh, I'll be presenting the Legacy Girls study. And I hope with this study that we can answer some questions about how young girls can reduce their risk of breast cancer. The Legacy Study is a new cohort that we started last year in early 2011. We were funded for five years by the National Cancer Institute. And what we are doing is we are enrolling 900 girls. They are between the ages of 6 and 13. And half of the girls are the daughters of women who are enrolled in the Breast Cancer Family Registry. And I will talk about that in just a minute. And then for, for comparison, we have half of the girls who are for families without breast cancer. Recruitment is taking place at five sites in, this, in New York City. Uh, Mary Beth Terry is the principal investigator, and she's actually here together with her coordinator, Ann Johnson. We have a site in Ontario, Canada, in Philadelphia, Salt Lake City, and the San Francisco Bay Area. And these are the sites where the breast cancer family registry is located. Um, what we are doing is we're going to be following the girls prospectively for five years, and we will collect data on biospecimens at six months intervals. So that's just for background uh, what we're planning to do. So the question, why do we want to study girls from families that have breast cancer? Um, as has been long and well established, uh, fam a fa having a family his history of breast cancer is a risk factor for um, breast cancer. Uh, the risk is increased two to fourfold depending on the number of, of affected relatives and um, relatives' ages when they were diagnosed. And the risk is much, much greater, five to eightfold increased depending on whether um, a person uh, is a carrier of mutations in the BRCA1 or BRCA2 genes. And therefore, girls who have a family history of breast cancer, who have relatives with breast cancer, are at increased risk. And this is what we're trying to focus on in the Legacy Girls study. Dr. Biro has just nicely shown uh, there, there is a number of early life exposures and events that we now know that uh, increase um, the risk of developing breast cancer. So for us, we are, we're hoping in the Legacy Girls study to answer the question, uh, how can girls um, who have a family history, how can they reduce their risk of developing breast cancer once they reach adulthood? As I mentioned before, um, we are building this study upon, upon the Breast Cancer Family Registry, uh, which is a program we started in 95 uh, in the US, Canada, and Australia. And uh, since 95, we have enrolled over 13,000 multi-generational families into the family registry. 
and we oversampled young women with breast cancer, but we went all the way up to age 64. And because we have many, because of the oversampling, because we have many young women in the breast cancer family registry, we, we actually have uh, many daughters um, that are not part of the family registry, but we are now enrolling them in the legacy study. And the families that we have in the, in the registry uh, represent families across a broad spectrum of risk. We have families where there's only one person with breast cancer. We have families where there's multiple cases of breast cancer. And we have families where uh, one or more members have uh, mutations in BRCA1 or BRCA2. And so, um, as we are now looking at the daughters um, in these families, um, they have relatives with breast cancer. That can be the girl's mom, it can be the girl's aunts, or grandmothers, or other relatives that have been diagnosed with breast cancer. Why do we want to study early life exposures? Why is that important? I think we learned a lot about that this morning. And most of the studies that have looked at early life exposures have focused on adults, on adult women, and asked them questions about early life exposures. And based on the literature, what other people have found, what was presented this morning, we know that ionizing radiation, particularly at a young age, increases the risk of breast cancer. We just saw some data about early menarche, which is a well-established risk factor. Uh, we also know in, from migrant studies that in Asian and Latina immigrant women who migrate to the U.S. At a, at a young age, they have a higher risk of breast cancer. We think that's related probably to changes in lifestyle and reproductive factors as they, as they start living here. Uh, a number of prenatal factors have been associated with breast cancer risk, things like birth weight, twin status, pregnancy, certain pregnancy conditions. Also, uh, a number of childhood and adolescent factors have been associated with breast cancer risk, and these are things like the growth rate, body size, physical activity, dietary intake. So we are um, trying to put these two um, observations together. We want to study uh, these early life factors in young girls because if we study uh, adult women and ask them about early life exposures, it's difficult to do because there's many years back to remember and the recall might not be very accurate. And if we are studying, uh, let's say, young girls and we want to follow them until they uh, might develop breast cancer, it can take many, many years because breast cancer still is fairly rare in women under age 40, let's say, but as the women get older, the risk increases. So our approach in the legacy study is that we're going to study young girls, we're going to study early life exposures, but we're going to look at intermediate markers of breast cancer risk. And on the bottom uh, of the slide here, you see I've listed the pubertal, uh, the intermediate outcomes that we want to study. So we're interested in pubertal development. We're going to be assessing Tanner stage. We are going to be asking about age at menarche. We're going to be looking at breast tissue characteristics using a novel method. Uh, we will be studying markers of epigenetic changes, and we will also study the psychosocial impact of increased breast cancer susceptibility. And these are outcomes that really reflect the interests and expertise of our <coughs> investigator team. And at, on the last slide, I will show you who the, all the participants are. So we're going to be looking at these intermediate outcomes. And in, in green on the left side, I'm listing some of the early life exposures we we're going to be studying in the girls. We're going to be asking about prenatal exposures and birth characteristics. We will study body size and growth, certain lifestyle factors like physical activity and diet. We will also um, be studying the social, family, and the built environment and selected biomarkers. And as you can see, I'm not listing environmental exposures on this slide, and I know this is something of great interest to, to this meeting and to this group of investigators. Uh, when we wrote the grant, we really had to focus our grant proposal. You know, you cannot uh, propose to study everything. Uh, we are now have the opportunity, because we follow the girls, we contact them every six months, so we have opportunity to collect more data. Um, and we, in fact, in our second follow-up study, we have now included some questions on envi environmental exposure. So we will be covering that as well. 
So what's um, particular to our legacy study? We are very much interested in finding out whether the effects of early life exposures operate differently in girls that are at higher risk of breast cancer because of their family history. We want to know are the associations between these, between these early life factors I showed you and, and the intermediate outcomes, uh, do these associations differ? Are they modified by family history? And as we follow the girls over time, we would like to uh, learn whether the rate of development or the rate of change in the biomarkers that we're studying, whether um, these are modified again by the family history. So to do so, we have, as I said, we have two groups. We have um, girls from the breast cancer family registry, the daughters, and then we will uh, study girls uh, without uh, breast cancer in their families, and they are at average risk, and that will be our comparison group. As far as we know, the Legacy Girls study is the only youth cohort worldwide, and this cohort will be enriched with girls at increased risk of breast cancer. Um, they will come from a family that covers a wide spectrum of risk. And if we were to look in other cohorts, we might only find maybe 5% of girls who have a family history. So in order to study that, we really had to um, uh, go to the breast cancer family registry where we can find uh, girls at increased risk. We will be looking at um, pubertal development, Tanner staging, we'll be looking at age-out menarche, um, and here I'm just going to show very briefly a few um, endpoints that we will be studying that are novel uh, related to pubertal and adolescent development, so they include breast tissue characteristics, the markers of epigenetic changes, and then the psycho so psychosocial impact of increased breast cancer risk. First, um, just a few words about breast tissue characteristics. As we know from studies in adult women, uh, having dense breast tissue um, measured by mammography is a strong risk factor for breast cancer. Risk is uh, increased four to six fold in women who have dense breasts but we cannot do mammography in young girls to assess breast density because of, uh, because as I said before, uh, young girls are set very sensitive to ionizing radiation. So we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be assessing uh, breast tissue characteristics using uh, a, new, a new method. It's called optical spectroscopy, OS, and this is a non-invasive method of assessing breast tissue composition. And, and what happens is the, a light uh, is shined on the breast tissue, and it does not involve, involve ionizing radiation. And uh, the light absorbance then provides information on, on the breast architecture and measures certain components. Um, this work will be led by Julia Knight and by Lothar Lilge, who is actually the person who developed OS. Um, they are up in Ontario, where we have one of the legacy sites. So they will lead um, this work on breast tissue uh, characteristics. Um, Julia Knight has done published work, um, and she has shown that OS can detect changes in the breast tissue that occur with age and changes between Paris and Olypris, young women. So she did work in young women, and we're now going to uh, use this method in, in, in our girls. The Ontario site is currently doing pilot work on this method, and then in years four and five, all of the legacy sites will perform OS, and will be doing this on girls who will be 10 years of age by that time. Uh, another novel endpoint, uh, we'll be looking at genomic DNA methylation. Um, epigenetic changes may explain how individuals with identical genetic profiles have different health outcomes. We heard about that a little bit more this morning. This work will be uh, led by Mary Beth Terry and Regina Santella from the New York site um, of, of the legacy study. Dr. Terry has um, done some pilot work in the legacy study, and uh, they have shown that girls with a family history have lower overall levels of DNA methylation compared to girls without a family history. And lower levels of DNA methylation has been associated with in adult cancers and also with breast cancer. 
And then lastly, I will just say a few words about um, our aim that will address the psychosocial impact. Psy psychosocial well-being, including the performance of health and risk behaviors, has not been studied among young girls with a family history of breast cancer, so we have the opportunity to do so in the Legacy Girls Study. And um, we have questionnaires to, as to assess the psychosocial impact and hope to identify um, parent and daughter barriers and enhancement to adaptive behavioral and psychosocial responses. Currently, it is not known how young girls with a breast cancer history adapt to familial risk, and we don't know how familial risk impacts behaviors throughout the pubertal development period. So um, we think that the legacy um, cohort will be important in giving some answers to these questions. Now this work will be um, led by doctors Angela Bradbury, Mary Daly, and Linda Patrick Miller. They are at the Philadelphia Legacy site and will lead this work. So where are we right now? We are in the first year uh, still of recruitment. We're about 80% done with recruiting uh, the girls. We, um, we en enrolled as many girls as we could from the Breast Cancer Family Registry, but also had to go to other sources uh, because the Breast Cancer Family Registry women are, you know, they're aging, so we have fewer and fewer with you know, girls that are between the ages of 6 to 13. So we uh, identified girls through other sources, other breast cancer clinics. And then uh, we have um, the girls from the community, and we have identified them through friend referrals, through community outreach and community events. It has been a, a challenging um, enterprise to, you know, to, to get these girls and have them wanting to participate for five years, but we've had, um, we've really found a lot of interest and uh, have had really good follow-up. We're now in follow-up too, so it's very reassuring that the families want to come back and continue. So what we do is we collect a questionnaire. We have questionnaires that we administer to all the moms or guardians. Um, and we have questionnaires that we administer to the girls once they reach age 10. So for the younger girls, we don't collect any data. And we collect biospecimens, we collect blood or saliva samples and urine samples from all the girls of all the ages. And so we're building a, a very valuable uh, repository of biospecimens to answer our questions, but also to have these uh, resources available to answer future questions. Um, we take body size measurements. Uh, we measure height and weight and his, hip and waist circumference. Um, and uh, we get information on Tanner staging by self-report, where the girls report and the moms report. And at two of our clinical sites, we also have nurses doing it. And then in the older girls, we'll get the OS measurements. And at this time, we are, because we started uh, recruitment last fall, so we have some girls that are now doing already the follow-up at six months, and we have some that just started the 12 months follow-up, and we're gonna be seeing these girls every six months. So this is my last slide. This, this uh, work uh, involves a large investigator team and would have not been possible with, uh, without the expertise, the, the broad expertise from a very um, diverse and multidisciplinary team. You see here the, six, uh, the five sites participating in the legacy study. And we're also organized that each site is uh, responsible for a particular core activity according to their expertise and interest at their site. And we received funding from the National Cancer Institute and greatly appreciate that, particularly now that it is so difficult to get research funding. And, and uh, we feel very fortunate that this is a cohort study because uh, at the moment uh, it's difficult to get uh, funding for new cohort studies. We were funded uh, through four uh, linked R1s, and I'm listing um, the, the grant numbers if somebody's interested. <laughs> so this concludes my talk, and 